Hi everybody, in this video we're going to look at another 10 D5 render tips in 10 minutes ish. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, everybody, tip number one, using the Z key, or if you're American, the Z key for some reason. Now, this is one of those things that I think a lot of people don't realize in D5, but if you see over here on the far left in our object tab, we do have a listing of all of the objects. Now, you can see this is a pretty complicated enough scene, and so in order to really zoom around and select and make changes, one way we can do this really quickly is just identify the object we need. So, for example, let's go over to this rectangular light that's inside and hit Z on our keyboard, and it will zoom right to the object. Now, this can be extremely useful as your scene becomes more and more complicated. As long as you know the name of the object that you're looking for, you should find it pretty easy to zoom right to it. Let's get our sun coming in. And you can see, there we go. Just spin this a little bit. And you can see it is quite sharp. So, using this button here, you can see right beside North Offset, we can open this up and down, we get additional controls. But what we're interested in is not just the sunlight intensity, which is the overall brightness of the light coming from the sun, but this one right here, the sun disk radius. And why this matters is really simple. You can adjust the strength of the shadow, more specifically, the softness of the shadow. So if I take this to the right, you can see what's happening. You can see from left to right, left to right, and you can see that by cranking it all the way to the right, you can get a much nicer and softer shadow fall off. It's a really simple technique, and I would strongly recommend that for most of your renders, you want to make sure that you're not leaving this down at one or two. Three, color grading within D5. If we look at the effects tab over here on the right and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will see color grading. This will only be there if you're using the pro version, the paid version of D5 render and you have the widgets enabled. But click on color grading and you can see we have options here for global, shadows, midtones, and what's going to be the highlights. Now, where this could be really useful where you're unlikely to actually adjust all of these universally, although you could go ahead and do that. But where I might find this useful is the Shadows tab, particularly the ability to add blue to your shadows. And you can see, we can just go straight to the Shadows tab here. I'm going to select and drag this into the blue a little bit. You can also adjust it manually, adjusting effectively the hue and saturation value down here on the right. Now, why you would do this is if you wanted to add perhaps more blue light to your exterior renders. By sort of default, shadows that are exterior in natural light environments tend to be more blue than they tend to be orange. And this is one way we can go about doing that in D5 render. Now, you may be thinking, well, why don't I just use the white balance slider? And the reason you don't want to do that per se is because the white balance is a universal slider. So check this out. If I move it to the right, it makes everything orange. And if I move it to the left, it makes everything blue. By color grading the image manually, by going after, for example, the shadows, you can control the shadow color and not affect the other colors in your scene, the midtones or the highlights. And I think it's really, really cool. All right, everybody, tip four, the use of LUTs. All right, if we look at our scene here and we go to the top of the effect tab, we can use a lookup table. Think of a lookup table as really just a guideline for how all the pixels should be colored in your scene. Um, lookup table is just a fancy way of kind of adjusting the color en masse to your entire scene. Now, D5 comes with a handful of lookup tables. You can just hit apply to turn them on. And you can see that they'll actually be under your default tab. And there's about five by default. However, you can download lookup tables online and add them to a custom folder. So for example, I have a folder here with these cinematic LUTs that I've gotten from somewhere online. We can do a control A, control C to copy. Now, 
By default, the LUT folder is kind of hard to find within D5, but if we just go here now to the drop down menu, customize LUT, you can actually see that it'll open up the custom LUT folder and we can do a control V, paste in, I already have these in there, and click open. Now, they shouldn't appear by default when you do that, but the next time you open up D5, you'll have access to your own custom LUTs. And these can give a really, really dramatic look. You can have different LUTs that really mimic different actual real world cameras, or you can go for LUTs that are a lot more stylized. Either way, they're a great way to adjust the look and feel of your D5 render. Next tip pertains to effectively the aspect ratio and adjusting the image size of your D5 renders. So by default, you'll see that our aspect ratio is set to window, which is effectively going to be instead of what you see in here. You can go in here and adjust the width and height, but for the most part, these renders are always going to be sort of longer uh, as opposed to higher. But what happens if we want to change that? What happens if we want something that's got a more vertical aspect ratio? Well, we can actually just pick the default aspect ratio that we want, maybe 5.5. Five. And then we can go over to the custom tab here. Now, you can see by default, adjusting one is going to adjust the others based on the aspect ratio that you've picked. But we can override that just by clicking this little icon right here. So, for example, I could take uh, an image that's maybe four pixels, 4,000 pixels wide. And I'm going to put this to maybe 6,000 pixels high. And there you can see the letterbox effect will actually tell you what's going to be in your shot. So I could come in here and do a really tight shot of just the stuff that's on the actual table, but the resolution is going to be still 6,000 by 4,000. Now, this means you don't have to do maybe an 8K image and crop out what you don't want. You can actually have a high resolution image of just what you need. Tip number six, panoramas in D5. Panoramas are one of the sort of key features, but in many ways are kind of forgotten about by a lot of users. We can go to image, and by default, you'll see we're on the mode image, but if we click to the right of that panorama, we can go into that panorama sounds. We can, right now, we have about three sizes, four, eight, and 16K, but we can also render out all of the channels. And so what we can do is put this to whatever format we want, and then just go ahead and export. Once you have your panorama saved and exported, you can load it up into a website or another panorama software like Chief Architect, and you can actually see your 360 degree rendering. And you can see it's pretty cool to be able to go in and look around your shot. Now, if you're gonna do panoramas, please be mindful that, uh, you know, the back might be visible. So, you know, if you can, make sure there's enough content in the front, back, and sides of your shot. Moving on, super important tip if you're working with a lot of lights. So, for example, in our scene, we just have a handful of lights. You can see we've got a few out here and we've got one on the roof. But if you're working on a scene that features a huge array of lights, it can be really tricky to keep track of everything. One way we can actually fix this is by going to this little button right here on the object menu, click on that, and you can see now we've got a drop down. And what we can do is select just lights. Now this is super, super important. Now this allows you to really fine tune your selections. It'll give you all of the lights in one easy to access panel. And if you remember from one of the other videos we talked about, you can name lights in D5. All you have to do is right click and rename them. So I can put this as top light and click enter. Now, this is an incredibly easy way to toggle on all your lights to work with lighting full stop. But the important thing to remember when you do this is when it comes to having this highlighted, you cannot select anything else in D5 and this took me a really long time to figure out kind of why I couldn't select anything. Once you have this selected, whether it's models, particles, nature, it doesn't really matter, that locks your selection to just that one thing. The next tip is in many ways probably the best and most important tip that I can give you, and I wish I could claim credit for it. 
But this actually belongs to another D5 user called Nanhai Gwen, who posted on the D5 uh, Facebook forum, and he credited this to a D5 user called Reset. So this is not my thing. I wish it was, but it's probably one of the most important things. It's a way to light your scene to add extra light into the corners. He referred to it as a light wash technique, and I think it's absolutely brilliant. But what it comes down to is quite simply, we've always used rectangle lights to add extra light into our scene. You can make them larger or smaller or fit the scene. But the light that comes from these tends to come out in a very straight fashion. And so the light that's emitted isn't soft. But his advice, and again, I'm not responsible for this, but I think it's awesome, was to create a rectangle light, adjust the barn door length and the barn door angle. And you can see what we're going to do is we're turning this into a, effectively a soft box for light. And I'm going to move this down and I'm going to rotate it. And again, this is a light wash technique. And I'm going to change the color to really vivid red, just so you guys can all see that and increase the intensity. Okay, and you can see the effect that this is having. Light is now being shot up into the corners of our scene. And so in order to make this a uniform light, I'll rotate a little bit more. I'm going to hold down shift, make a duplicate, and then rotate that duplicate here a little bit. All right, and if we select both of these together, you can see the effect that we have. If I look at this in wireframe, this kind of uh, where we can see it horizontally, you can kind of see the effect that we've got going on right now. If you place this just outside your scene where we would normally add a square rectangle light, and then we change the temperature back to just kind of white if you want, and drop the intensity down a little bit. If we watch the corners, I can toggle this group on and off. And I'm going to turn off all the other lights just in the scene. Just make sure everything else is off and turn off my emissive light. Now you can kind of see just environment light coming in. It's okay, but it's not hitting those corners. All right. So with this technique, we can select this group, move this forward a little bit, and we're blasting light into the corners. Now, the cool thing about this is we can actually also go in there and manually tweak this, and we can actually scale these lights to be a little bit larger as well, which I think is really, really, really cool. Look at this. Grabbing the scale slider, just tweaking it, and there we go. We're affecting both lights in the group, and now you can see how much better the light in those corners is actually going to be. One other tip I wanted to share is that some library assets can be broken apart. So if we hit M on our keyboard and we type in this phrase here, combin, C-O-M-B-I-N, short for combination, you can see that a whole bunch of different assets come up. Now, the ones that I found most useful for this is the kitchen assets. So I'm going to drop this into my scene, show you what I mean. And we can just place this right here. Now, what I mean by that is if we actually look at the objects tab over here on the left, you'll see that this is actually grouped. So to fix this, we can right click and ungroup it. And now the individual elements are accessible. You can move them around to your heart's content or place them in different positions. Because quite simply, having the objects arranged in a linear fashion like this isn't very natural or normal. Now, I found some objects that pop up here are not uh, sort of break apartable. It's not really a word, but there you go. But a lot of the kitchen assets are, and that can be really useful. Same for some of the pillow combinations. These can be brought into your scene just like that. And again, right click, ungroup, or control shift G. And now this allows us to select individual assets, move, rotate, adjust them as needs be. Finally, the last tip I want to share with you guys is kind of a little bit of a SketchUp and D5 tip. All right, so say you've built a scene in SketchUp and you've sent it over to D5 and you're kind of liking the look of where things are at. Uh, in particular, say you find an object that you really like. 
it would be very tempting to kind of just look at this and go, okay, cool, I want to keep this. I want to use it again in my other D5 scenes. But if I add this to my local, it's going to add everything. So how do we get around that? Well, what we can do is go to SketchUp, select the objects. We can do Control A to select everything. Hold down Shift and deselect the object you want. In this case, this lamp. Right click and hide. Now, once I hit the update on the D5 converter, by the way, this is the older 2.4 converter, not the shiny new one from 2.5. You can see that that should have removed everything. All right, go back to D5. And now all we have in this shot is the lamp. Now I can just left click on it. I can do a couple of things. I can potentially right click and just basically rename it. But I'm gonna duplicate it first, duplicate place it there and then I'm going to right click and rename and I'm going to call this nice lamp I'm going to hide the other one select the original and just turn that off and now this is my my model and I'm going to get the camera kind of close up here I like the look of this select it and I'm going to right click and add to local now what this means is if we go file new project and I hit M on my keyboard go to local assets, and there we go. And I basically brought in my original lamp model. Yeah, hit Z on the keyboard to zoom in, and there it is. Okay, hopefully that helps you out. I think that's really useful for assets that you've grabbed from other places, and you kind of just, as you're working, want to add it to your asset library. Uh, with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for today. Uh, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. And if you want additional training, I'll leave a link to my Gumroad and Udemy courses. All right. Cheers.